Hello everyone. In this video, we are starting reaction of carbons. There are different types of reaction of carbons, and among all these, we are going to discuss cycloaddition. Now, it will be convenient for you if you watch all the previous videos 1, 2, 3, and 4, that is starting from part 1 to part 4. So, it will be helpful for you to understand uh, this video. Okay. So, you can find the playlist link for all the related videos of carbine in the description box okay so let's see what is the activity of carbines carbine react instantly in different types of ways in the environment once they are formed because they are very reactive in nature so once they are produced there will be immediate reaction okay now singlet and triplet carbine they exhibit different types of reactivity and to understand that you have to know what are their properties that is what is the difference between singlet and triplet and for that you can click on the link appearing on the screen that is right top corner okay singlet carbon generally participate in reactions it may be electrophile uh, it may act as electrophile or it may act as nucleophile okay so nucleophilic nature that is rare but still that is also possible and if it is triplet carbon then it is behaving as diradical because there are two electron and their directions are towards same side fine and they participate in stepwise radical addition so first the one electron will take part in reaction and then the next electron fine now we have total four types of reactions that are possible for carbon cycloaddition insertion dimerization and rearrangement now this video which is part five that is only for cycloaddition so here we will discuss in detail what is cycloaddition reaction so in general if we want to express this reaction it is like this so in the left hand side the species that you are seeing that is actually carbon and we have two different types of substituent attached to carbon and here we have any unsaturated molecule which is represented in this general structure a double bond b and after reaction that is after cycloaddition these two are the newly generated bond and the pi bond is broken between A and B. So here we are getting a cyclic type of structure. So that is why it is cycloaddition. So the cycloaddition reaction of carbon, which is number one, because rest of the reactions we will discuss in the upcoming videos. So this reaction, that is addition of carbon, it will be to some unsaturated molecule, that is olefin, CC double bond, or it may be CC triple bond. Now it is a very useful reaction because ultimately you get cyclopropane ring or it may be cyclopropane ring depending on what is your starting material. If it is double CC double bond it will be cyclopropane that is the final product. If it is CC triple bond it will be cyclopropane that will be the final product. Okay. Now cyclopropane as it is a very strained ring its synthesis is not very uh, easy. Okay. But in this method by using carbon through cycloaddition reaction we can make cyclopropane or cyclopropene and we can also have some different types of variety depending on what type of substituents are present in the carbon. Here we have taken chloroform and potassium tertiary butoxide. So in presence of this strong base, this type of dichlorocarbon will be generated and you can see the arrow direction, the CC double bond, this will be, pi bond will be broken and we are getting these two newly generated sigma bond. Fine. So carbines, as you are seeing this reaction, it is 2 plus 1 or this type of reactions are also known as chelatopic reaction. Because cycloaddition reaction may be different types. So this is one of the type. Because 2 is for this CC double bond and 1 is for this single carbon which is connected to this 2 carbons of CC double bond. And ultimately we are getting cyclopropane. Singlet and triplet carbine, they exhibit divergent reactivity. If it is singlet methylene, that is CH2 carbon, methylene means CH2 group. So if it is singlet carbon, reactions are stereospecific. But if it is triplet carbon, methylene carbon, then it is stereo selective. Okay. Now because of these different types of property, that is what type of final products you are getting, if you observe that carefully, that can help you to probe the nature of carbon. So if you are getting stereo specific product, then you have to, uh, you can predict that it is singlet methylene. 
if it is stereoselective you can predict it is triplet methylene so in this way it will help us it will give us the information what type of uh, carbon we have is it singlet or triplet now what is stereo specific or stereoselective just in a simple way we will see it see this if it is a stereo specific reaction then what happens stereochemically different reactant gives stereochemically different product that means if you start from cis you will get a particular type of product if you trans uh, start from trans you, you will get particular type of product so here i am saying cis and trans because the reactions that we are going to see that is uh, cis and trans but it is not necessarily cis and trans it may be any stereochemically different re reactants that is starting material if it is stereo selective now suppose you have started from c starting material you can get mixture of products and among these two different possibilities that is mixture one will be predominant but it is not specific that is you are not getting any particular stereo chemistry from a particular uh, stereo chemistry of the reactant okay there may be mixture but one of these will be predominant we will see example of stereo selectivity and specificity here we have taken a cis olefin which is clear from this structure and another olefin also we have taken which is trans so this is cis this is trans and triplet carbon is uh, we have taken methylene carbon triplet now you can see when you have started from cis then also you are getting cis product that is cyclopropane product but still here these two groups are on the same side but you can also get trans right when you start from trans then also you are getting mixture so whether you start from cis or you are you are starting from trans you are always getting cis product and trans product and that is stereo selectivity but if it is singlet carbon keeping that is same type of starting material little difference is there but this is also cis the second one trans now when you are starting from cis you are getting only cis product so that is very specific these two reactions are different okay and when you are starting from trans now you are getting trans product so that is stereo specificity and i hope now it is clear what is the difference between stereo selectivity and stereo specificity now why it is so if we deep dive into the mechanism then only it will be clear here we have taken a general structure of olefin which is cis stereo chemistry right now this cc uh, that is the pi bond that is present I can also write this pi bond in this way so if I break this bond obviously these two electrons their directions are opposite and we have taken singlet methylene which is clear from these two black colored electron their directions are towards same side now this left hand side electron only it can match that is it can bond with this electron because these two are opposite if you look at the right hand side blue and right hand side black electron they are having same direction so that is why only the left hand side blue and black electrons they will be bonding with each other and as a result now we are getting this bond this black electron is still left and this both electrons their directions are same so they cannot form bond to each other right their direction must be opposite so that is why spin inversion important now after spin inversion if you observe this carefully direction is now opposite so now these two they can form bond and this is a another newly generated bond but for this process that is the spin inversion process if it is taking some time in the meantime something different may also happen and what is that now cc bond rotation is possible so this cc bond if it is rotating now this r and h it is opposite so now these two R groups they are opposite to each other so in between this that is in the meantime of spin inversion we are also getting cc bond rotation now after cc bond rotation still these two electrons having a direction in the same side so again a spin inversion was uh, required now their directions are opposite and this is the second newly generated bond right so see we have started from C starting material and we are getting both trans and C's. Depend on which one will be uh, predominant, 
uh, that that may vary depending on groups and whether spin inversion is taking more time or cc bond rotation is taking more time but the important point is you are getting both cis as well as trans but this type of mechanism it is not required for if you have started from singlet methylene because when it is singlet methylene these two black electrons they will be already uh, that is opposite direction so one electron will match with the left hand side blue electron another will match with the other blue electron okay So now we can say that triplet carbenes, they must pass through an intermediate with two unpaired electrons. So here if you see this intermediate and this intermediate, here uh, two unpaired electrons are present, right? Mostly uh, that is, I should uh, show this picture because here both the electrons, they are uh, unpaired electrons, their directions are also same side. So this type of intermediate you will not get if it is singlet carbon. Because in that case, it will be concerted mechanism. But here it is not so. It is going through some intermediate. Some more information for cycloaddition reaction. We can also have intramolecular version of the cycloaddition reaction. Here we have taken allyl carbene. CC double bond and then CH2. So this part is actually carbene. Now if I am numbering these carbons, total 4 carbons are there. Now look at the right hand side structure and compare this numbering. So this is the newly generated bond and this is also the newly generated bond. And I can also write this structure like this. CC double bond, then CH2 and then carbon. So here, these two will be newly generated bond. Okay, one, two, three and four. So here we are getting bicyclobutane. So this type of if you look at the structure carefully, this is highly strained structure, right? So this type of uh, compounds also we can make by this uh, method. So this is bicyclobutane. So the product bicyclobutane it is really unusual compound, but still you can make it by uh, this method. It contains a ring system with considerable strain because of abnormal bond angles, obviously and uh, this demonstrate the value of carbon reaction so application of carbon reaction for the synthesis of compounds that are difficult to obtain if you apply some other methods but here we can easily make them some more information that is same type of reaction intramolecular version here you can see we are doing a reaction where on, we have taken only one molecule and the carbon will be generated in this carbon so it is generated within the molecule so that is why it is intramolecular and uh, in the presence of appropriate transi transition metal typically copper or rhodium what happens in presence of this type of transition metal alpha diazocarbonyl compounds so this is alpha diazocarbonyl compounds the compound that you are seeing here this one it will uh, it will be converted to transition metal carbon because here we have taken copper bronze and then it will undergo addition reaction in presence of CC double bond which is already present in the molecule. Fine. So this is already present. Now here if we want to know who, which bonds are the newly generated bond. Obviously this is the newly generated bond and this is also. So this will be the connection point. Right. Now though the next reaction which is basically insertion reaction we have not discussed yet. But just for information, if the same type of substrate you have taken, but there is no such double bond, then what will happen? So you can find some similarity here also this type of uh, diazo group is present, okay, diazo carbonyl. But unlike the previous molecule here, we do not have any CC double bond. So in presence of same condition, if the substrate is not having any double bond, then instead of getting cycloaddition product now we will get insertion product so this is insertion into cc bond or ch bond which will uh, be occurring here here this is the newly generated bond but if you are really curious that how we are getting this type of insertion product then that i will discuss in the next video that is uh, part six which will be related to this mechanism okay so i hope that uh, now you have some idea about this cycloaddition reaction. More reactions 
obviously we'll discuss in the upcoming videos thank you for your time